we try to outvalue people. We don't try to sell it cheaper or sell it more expensive. How do I sell an offer so incredible that nobody can compete with it? So we, we start with those price ceilings, though, because we know that's how consumers make decisions. So if you're below yeah. that and you don't see webinars selling at those price points, don't do it. You can be a pioneer later, but let's make money first. My name's Rudy Moore, host of Living the Red Life podcast, and I'm here to change the way you see your life in your earpiece every single week. If you're ready to start living the red life, ditch the blue pill, take the red pill, join me in Wonderland and change your life. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Living the Red Life. Excited for today's show. I have my friend Jason on. He is the webinar king, literally the best person in the world when it comes to webinars. Uh, I won't spoil his intro, but Jason, give give everyone a bit of an intro. Brag a little about your webinar success for a second. Um, yeah, I, it's insane. And just from a factual perspective, the amount of revenue we've generated with webinars, quarter billion dollars. If you extend it out to clients that we've helped and taught and implemented, it's over a half a billion dollars, which just sounds preposterous to say out loud. Uh, we've set records in the affiliate marketing space for best webinar in that space. Uh, we set it for product launches in our space as well. Uh, to date, I'm the only marketer Zoom has brought in to train their own users on how to do you know, webinars. And we're pretty happy about that because they're a multi-billion dollar business. And even folks like Alex Hermosi, they consult with me like he did before he did his latest book launch. So he paid me money to sit down with him. And if you watch that book launch, when they revealed it, they sold like 100,000 books in 20 minutes you will see part and parcel exact word for word phrases he uses that come out of my playbook. So if I'm, if I'm pitching myself to everybody right now, that's how I'm pitching. And I think, um, obviously you, you know, you, Russell obviously took the webinars and made them mainstream with a lot of our industry, but I know you worked with him closely in the early days as well. So how long have you been doing this whole webinar thing and how, how did it start? How did it become so famous? Great question. So 2008 is when I did my first webinar. And Rudy, what I did that I still urge people to do today who are scared and reluctant to start with webinars is I just went to my audience. I had about 3,000 people at the time. And this is laughable, but the, the most expensive thing I'd sold to that list was a $17 ebook. You know, I was new and I was scared. So I go to this audience and I see the potential in webinars. The technology is now there and people are smart enough to figure out how to get on a webinar. So they kind of knew about it, but didn't know much more than that. So the first foray into webinars that I did was, hey, I want to create a new product. I got this crazy idea. Uh, if you show up live and I'm going to try this new technology out and it works, I'll give you the product for free. So show up live, be my audience. When it's done, I'm going to attempt to create a product in front of your eyes and I will give you the recordings. If you don't show up, you don't get the recordings and I will sell it to you later. So the first webinar I ever did was about two and a half hours pure training off of a mind map. I taught people uh, time management systems and it went really well. Now, here's the interesting thing. We only had 17 people show up. And I say we, it was just literally me back then. 17 people showed up. So I thought a whole bunch of people were going to show up, but only 17 did, but they loved it. I went back to the audience and say, hey, you guys screwed up. You didn't show up. So I said, I was going to sell you this product for $37. I'll give you a second chance, buy it for $27 biggest converting offer at the time that I ever made to people who could have showed up the day before and got it for free and they missed it. And I thought, huh, there's something to these webinars. Forget selling, right? From a yeah. fulfillment perspective, from a client relationship perspective, there was something really valuable, valuable about this live interactive feedback, oh. which was novel back then. Uh, so I, I kind of took to it like a fish to water. Yeah. And I mean, we've been we, we've never done crazy amounts of webinars. We've dabbled on and off. And obviously my kind of forte has been low ticket, but we've recently moved to like, I kind of guess hybrid, like we're doing live virtual events that are like half day long and they're kind of webinar format, but they're also more hybrid event format. Cause I feel in my industry, everyone knows what a webinar is. So this is a little different and shakes it up a little and they've been working great for us and our it's interesting because our sales team, our close rate's 300% higher with those yeah. leads versus our low ticket. And, you know, I tell my team, I'm like, yeah, they just spent four hours with me versus seeing a 30 second ad and buying a low ticket. The context is wildly different, right? So that's right. You, you do build the brand and the rapport and, you know, we're getting a thousand people a week right now. So it's like, it's pretty great for your brand building as well as uh, the revenue side. 
Um, so, so just for anyone, anyone that doesn't know exactly how to structure a great webinar, mm -hmm. can you just give like the 60 second walkthrough of how, you know, they, they promote it, the landing page, how they opt in the difference between evergreen and live and just give them a, a lowdown. For sure. So the, when we talk webinar, the standard webinar is usually a, a pitch webinar and it, it, it lands at about 75 minutes in when you make your offer. So you have an intro section, five to 15 minutes. You have a content section, which is 45 to 60 minutes usually. Then you transition, which is only a few minutes to transition to the pitch. Then you get the pitch. Uh, I run out of a, I run out of slides about 75 to 90 minutes in. And what's cool yep. is if you're doing these live, if you have an audience and they're still questioning and asking things, then we sell until we either run out of energy or nobody's interested anymore. So I make most of my money on the fourth or fifth hour of a webinar in some instances. But we'll get back to that. That sounds absurd right now without context. So that's the that's the webinar itself, the presentation. And then there's what happens before the webinar and what happens after the webinar. So before the webinar. Uh, ideally, you have an audience you can reach on demand. Uh, so an email list is the preferable method to promote webinars because you could say, hey, I'm doing this webinar on Thursday. It's Monday. You should go here and register for it. And they go to a registration page that is just, hey, whatever this is, headline, bullet points, sign up. Thank you page just says, okay, check your email. There's information on how you can attend. And let me get you a little bit excited and jazzed up to attend. That's it. Two pages before the webinar. And then you're just going to mail that list like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, morning of, Thursday, an hour before. Now, the real magic, Rudy, and where we differ from everybody else is we probably make, oftentimes we make more money from the replay than we do for the webinar itself. So the live yes. webinar, we make some sales there, but we make a majority of our sales in the follow-up. So typically how that works is after the webinar, there's 72 hours that we will follow up with them. So if the webinar is on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, close on Sunday, roughly speaking, sometimes it's a Monday close, whatever the reason is. But in general, there's about 72 to 96 hours of follow-up. Starts off with, did you catch the replay? Did you see this amazing stuff happen? This knowledge was dropped here. Go check it out. We make the replay scarce so it expires when the offer expires. So the offer expires at the end of the campaign and the replay expires with it, forcing them to either decide to watch it or not to not just say, hey, I'll get around to it later. And then as we progress from the promotion standpoint and the follow-up, it becomes less about the replay and more about the offer. So it's like, hey, listen, at the end, we made this really good deal. It's only available for a little bit more period of time. So make sure you see it because you'll miss it otherwise. And so we, we keep forcing consumption to the replay, which then sells the offer. And that's what a typical campaign will look like. Generally, seven days and starts with getting them to the webinar. Webinar is the anchor point, the tent pole, if you will, that gets them excited. But for serious purchase decisions, Rudy, you know this, everybody knows this, if you really think about it, uh, people don't make them impulsively, typically. So they hear it and they say, that seems good. I think I might want it. And then they go to bed. <laughs> and then that's when the real selling happens, when they're, see when they're trying to sleep but can't. They're like, son of a bitch, I got to go buy that thing, but I can't, right? My wife's going to get mad at me. Yeah, I already yeah. bought five other courses I haven't used yet. I can't justify this logically, but damn it, I want it. And so they come back to the replay, and then they, you give them another reason to consider it. Uh, and you help them make a decision. That's how I always look at my webinars, Rudy, is my goal is to help you make the decision that is best for you. So buying something that you should buy that will change your life if you don't buy it, that's a bad decision. On the other hand, if you buy something that is not right for you, that's a bad decision. So my goal is to try to help people make the best decision for them. But the reality is if somebody has obsessively watched this, they thought about it, they need it, they have the economic means for it, it's so screamingly obvious that they should buy it. We just have to unlimit some sort of limiting belief that is preventing them from doing what is best for them. And yes. That's the uh, and who do you think, you know, I always try and guide my audience and followers that like don't get shiny object syndrome. Some stuff works for you, some stuff doesn't. So just, can you just list, because, you know, I don't want everyone just starting a webinar tomorrow as much as maybe you would love, but who, 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 who is a webinar great for? Who is it not for? Because I, you know, obviously I know depending on what you're selling. You're yep. selling a $20 e-commerce t-shirt. Might not be the best move for you, right? So Never do a webinar if you're selling a $20 yeah. t-shirt. Yeah, it's wasteful, right? So right tool for the right job. Uh, 
the webinar is designed for the 80-20 of the market. So 20% of the market spends 80% of its money. And that's who you want to write the webinar for because 99% of people in a market will not set aside two hours of their life to go deeper into a subject. They just won't. Um, they're what we call hobbyists. So who are the serious folks and who are the hobbyists? We want to separate the two, right? Um, now, from from a philosophical point of view, I believe it's not my duty to tell you how to spend your money as a customer. It's my my duty to give you the information to help you make the best decision. Now, we got to take care here because this is like asking a barber if you need a haircut. They're going to be inclined to say, of course you yeah. do. Sit down right here, you know? Uh, so we have to be careful that we're not making a biased determination, but I know information helps people make the best decision. So I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, we are on a webinar the other day and somebody says, hey, listen, if I start selling this products that, that you're promoting, we're promoting a supplement offer, and I list it on Amazon, which we suggest, it's not the primary way they make money, but might as well. If you can put it on a shelf, put it on a shelf. We, uh, so they say, if I start selling on Amazon and I put this up there and I have no reviews, why would anybody ever buy from me? And they think that's like a really valid question. Um, and it's it's not, honestly, because and I help them understand it's not. I said, if your attitude is I'm new, so nobody will do business with me, I guarantee you, you will never get business because you will always be new until you're not. And so would every business in the future from today. Every millionaire that made that started from scratch started with zero dollars, right? So the issue isn't being new or not. Now, if I let her go unchecked, and if that is truly the thing that's holding her back, I don't help her in any context, whether it's this offer, the next one in her life whatsoever. So I have to uh, help her make better decisions. So we give information in order to do that. But see, my competitors are also doing the same thing. And so I have to help them make better decisions than my competitors do. And if I believe that, then I know that they'll make decisions that will enrich them. And even if they don't buy my course, and this is why I love webinars so much, Rudy, they will remember the value I've provided, which will make them more likely to do business with me in the future, regardless of they buy my thing, your thing, somebody else's, because they can link. He helped me become unstuck over here. And that's what I look at for webinars. So like, let's take Bryce on the object uh, as an example. So here's a really good webinar technique. Um, we try to avoid cliches as much as possible because if I say the same thing everybody else says, I'm not going to have any new impact that anybody else is going to give to that person. So it's a cliche in our market, bright, shiny object, bright, shiny object, bright, shiny object. So one of the many ways in which I deal with that is I say, bright, shiny objects aren't inherently bad. My goal is to have the brightest shiny object so bright it drowns out any shine from any other object. So therefore, you can't get distracted by it. And the customer says, oh, damn, that actually makes sense. So we're not fighting a war with their yeah. constraint or their limit. We're saying, I can use that and help them become a better version of themselves. And so then, then our criteria is, well, what's the brightest shiny object that makes the most sense? Uh, and sometimes the best objects, Rudy, are the ones that have a coat of dust on them. So if we have to brush off the dust, sometimes the real value is hidden under the dust. So then that, that also helps them determine... Yeah. I can make decisions based on things other than what seems slick and hot and sexy in the now. Yeah. And let's talk about the price of the the webinar. Like I've always said, like I like to use webinars for $500,000 kind of minimum and then obviously higher ticket beyond. And if it goes too high, I generally go to a book a call versus selling right on there. But I would love your, you know, obviously there's, there's so many opinions and way, you know, ways to make it work. But if you had to give my, you know, the listeners a, a rule of thumb, what would it be in terms of sort of price point ranges and, and when you would not, when it's too cheap to probably do a webinar just because economically getting people to register the show rate, blah, 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 or when it gets too high that you might be better to get them on a call as a pitch versus pitching the offer? Yeah, great question. So every, it, it differs by industry. So every cool. industry has price ceilings and they're very obvious to spot. You could say, okay, the market leaders in this space, when they do one-to-many selling, typically this is the price point that is they don't get past it. Sure. So we can sell up until that price point, and if we exceed that, we're in weird territory. Uh, I still like to try to test it, Rudy. Yeah. Uh, my biggest campaigns broke. So in our in our industry, the price ceiling is two thousand dollars. Yes, and it seems like after two thousand customers. Uh, don't want to spend money with you unless they can talk to somebody personally. Yep. That's the general rule of thumb. What's funny is whether it's 2,000 or 4,000, 
it's the same to them. The next price ceiling is 5K, generally speaking. So we're like, well, we got to figure out how to go up to 5K uh, and then get somebody on there personally. However, with that said, my biggest promotions ever, I was able to sell for 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, sometimes $10,000 one to many without anybody talking to anybody. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Before we go into the rest of this episode, I'm gonna interrupt abruptly and just ask you one big favor. I hope you're getting a ton of value, a ton of knowledge. I hope you're getting some breakthroughs from myself and the guests, and I want one thing in return. What I would love is for you to subscribe and leave a review. The reviews and the subscription grows the podcast. It allows me to bring you even better guests. It allows me to invest even more time and money into this podcast to bring you the latest and greatest, the best entrepreneurs from around the world that are crushing life, crushing their business and giving you all the tools, the mindset hacks, the knowledge and the environment you need to be successful. So do me a favor, if you've got any amount of value from today's episode so far or any previous episode or any of the content I've done, it would mean the world to me if you hit a five-star review, give us your feedback on the show, the episodes and subscribe and download. Plus, if you do that and send me a screenshot on Instagram at Rudy Moore Life, I will send you a bunch of my free training, marketing courses, sales courses worth $499. Yes, $500 worth of courses for a simple 30 second review. It would mean the world to me. Send me that screenshot. I would love for you to leave that review and I would appreciate it very, very much so we can keep growing this show and make it awesome. So let's get back into the episode. I appreciate you guys and let's dive back in. So if they have a previous relationship with you, if they've already bought something on the front end, that's 2000. We put a back end webinar on that. We can, we can exceed what is generally in that space, the limitation. Okay. But you're um, also an outlier in the production and performance side. I'm right? also Michael Jordan of webinars, right? So yeah, I can so do things yeah. that most people can't do. I, I, yeah, so I think a good rule of thumb is like five, would you say 500 to two grand is a good Sort of price uh, and it one. depends on the industry, right? So if I'm in the weight loss space, which is more consumer based than business based, um, five thousand five hundred on the front end may be as high as I can go. In fact, okay. I would probably find a webinar that does two hundred. Uh, I can get leads for cheaper though there, yeah. and uh, we can build a back end for that that is going to be more effective if we bring more front end people there. But nonetheless, it would be really easy. I can go into any industry and say, who are the top dogs in that industry that are selling via webinars right now? And there will yeah. be a commonality amongst price point. Now, nine out of 10 times, it is rooted in reality. One out of 10 times, it's the same reason everybody sells with a price tag that ends with seven. It doesn't make any sense, but somebody did it once and now everybody does it. So yeah. we find that price ceiling and we, we start there. Now, here's, here's the lesson that I would love everybody to learn, because if you take what we're saying out of context, it sounds very selfish. Let's find how to charge the most we can for the products that we sell. Uh, that's what a regular person off the street, if they were overhearing our conversation, would be hearing. Uh, there's obviously more to it. The way that I look at it is, how do, not how do I sell the cheapest thing? How do I sell something at the same price, but offer way more value than anybody else can? Right. Um, and because if, if I say, listen, I'm only going to sell you a $500 offer, I literally have only $500 of margin that I could fulfill with. So if I wanted to bring in a coach and good coaches aren't cheap and I wanted to pay him $100 per person to do coaching on my behalf, uh, if I have a $500 offer, that's whatever, 20% of the margin. If I have a $5,000 offer, 100 bucks is like what? minimal 2% of the offer, something like that. I don't know. But the point of it is, is our goal is to sell at the same prices as everybody else, but that allows us to have more more margin to create more value than anybody else. So yeah, sending this, out workbooks, including events, all those things add up, right? All of those things add up. Even just you at first. So say you don't have a team, say you don't have all this fancy stuff. Like you'll spend 60 hours a week with your clients if they're making you a million damn dollars. But if they're not yeah. making you anything, you you won't spend any time with them because you're busy trying to keep your head above water. Well, um, so we try to outvalue people. We don't try to sell it cheaper or sell it more expensive. How do I sell an offer so incredible that nobody can compete with it? So we, we start with those price ceilings though because we know that's how consumers make decisions. So if you're below yeah. that and you don't see webinars selling at those price points, don't do it. You can be a pioneer later, but let's make money first. And so you find those price ranges and then you say, okay, once it hits this, a webinar doesn't make sense, not as a direct sell. 
a webinar can make sense to move the sale forward. And we've seen that and we've used that uh, multiple times. But though there are definitely thresholds. But if you want to sell to the masses and you want to have the, the most reach possible, a webinar isn't your jam. Because 80% of the audience of your market only spends 20% of its money. Like, look at the comments on YouTube videos. I was just looking at one this morning and I'm like, God, at first I was like, this this person is the stupidest damn person. They don't understand anything about this. And I'm like, they're probably 14, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, okay, I got to be a little bit more compassionate here based on some of their 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 understanding of reality in the business world. They have none. Uh, but I'm like, that's the 80%. They're so. the people that think if you charge anything, it's too much. They're the types of people who uh, think that if you sell any how-to information, somehow you're a cheat because it's all free. So why would you ever pay for anything? They're that kind of people. They're the kind of people that are like, I guess I'll learn if I have to, but I really don't want to. Uh, and that's not who we cater to. Um, you yeah. can flip those people over, but we want an already person that says, listen, I am totally ready to be serious about this. And those are the people, two hours isn't even enough, Rudy. Dude, you run events as much as anybody does. You know, you can put people in a room for, for three days straight for eight hours. 24 hours mm -hmm. isn't enough for those type of people. And that's who we want to do business with. Good, good. So just to, as we come to a, a close, just to pull everything together. So, um, you like to fill them by email. Obviously, you can run ads to them. It's just older traffic and harder, right? So it needs to be even more dialed in. Um, and then uh, I, I, I guess, you know, we haven't gone into this today, but like we teach with low ticket offers or even our high ticket offers, we help our clients build. You're still all building it around some big hook. And then obviously, as we've talked about, when you get to the end, you're really trying to craft that irresistible offer for lack of a, a better term, right? To generalize it for everyone where you're giving tremendous value. You're trying to stand out from the crowd with the offer. Um, and, and then your understanding of, hey, position it based on industry price point wise um, and, and just figure out your sweet spot for the industry. Are there any final tips in the last couple of minutes you would give to people trying to get their webinar working or if they're thinking about starting a webinar? Yeah, yeah. Uh done is better than better. So what I see happens is a lot of people will model some of the webinars we do. And that's like fighting a black belt your first day at the dojo, um, too much too soon. So I'm a huge fan of when you start, somebody says, Jason, what technology should I use? Uh, the one you already know. I don't care what it is. You could use Zoom. You could use Webinar Jam. You could I use Zoom. It's great to start, right? Cause it's yeah. Like so if you know Zoom, use yeah. Zoom. I, I think Zoom is objectively the best, but subjectively, the best is the one that's easiest for you to get it done with. And mm -hmm. people are like, well, I want to create these fancy funnel, Jason. No, no, no. Just use Zoom's built-in registration yeah. or, or whatever the case is. So you don't have to build your own page. Yeah, it's not quite as good, but who cares? Because the most important thing about a webinar, I'll give you the order of uh, in, in importance, what is most important to least important. Most important is the offer. Okay. Selling water to a, somebody dying of thirst. That's what we try to do. If you have that, it doesn't matter if it's spring water, if it's tap water, or if it's water from a garden hose. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what package it's in. It's water to somebody who's dying of thirst. So the offer is the most important thing. The second most important thing is the audience that's receiving the offer. So who is that? And if I could focus on the most specific audience, the better still. So I could say, hey, you in the red over there, and you might look, you probably would, because that's your thing, right? But if I say, hey, Rudy, then you definitely will look. So taking yep. the same kind of information, but pointing it at a sub-segment of a market, that is so incredibly effective because it is the noise that will cut through all of the rest of the signal that's out there. It is that is like the, the metal detector that you can now use to find the needle in the haystack. It's super powerful. So that's the second most important thing. And then the third most important thing is going to be relating it to the audience in the terms that they can best understand it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm speaking Spanish and you're speaking English, I might have the secret for you, but if you don't understand Spanish, you will not be helped. So we got to put it in the language that they understand. And, yep. and then structure and all this other stuff comes down. So like technology, that might boost it a percent or two. Having a funnel might boost it a couple percent. But if you don't have the other things I talked about, the best funnel in the world, the best technology in the world, the best everything else in the world still will result in a losing campaign. And let's be real. Most campaigns will lose the first time you try them. 
marketing is more art than science, especially if you want to make some serious waves. If you want to play it super safe for nickels and dimes, yeah, you could probably uh, stack the deck in your favor, but I like to take chances. And so we don't know if it's going to work the first time. So what we do know is if we put it in front of people, we lead with value and sincerity first. We can see what happens and make adjustments. So if you're just, I got to get it out there, do all the following. And then I'll give you one last super hot tip. Like find the easiest frictionless path that you can do so you can focus majority of your time on the presentation itself. So make everything else as easy as possible, even if it's ugly, even if it's not dialed in, just have it there and just have it be good enough. And then the last thing is most people that don't do webinars, the I get it because public speaking is as scary as anything is. It's a huge phobia. And webinars, we have to sell too. So selling, people are scared out of their minds to sell and people are scared out of their minds to do public speaking. That's like two of the biggest fears in the world, you know, you know, in a nice little marketing sandwich. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think right. That is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I totally get it. I mean, that's why it makes so much damn money if you can discipline yourself to do it. So what I did when I first started, and I recommend everybody start like this, is start the webinar off with the following, saying on this webinar today, I have two objectives. Objective A is to show you how to do ABC, right? So some amazing, wonderful, high value thing that you're going to show them how to do. Okay. So you say, my first objective is to show you how to do blank. My second objective is to sell you something. Just tell them up front right away. Okay. Uh, say my second objective is to sell you something. because I think if you're the right person for it, it's going to be more expensive for you not to buy it than to buy yeah. it. However, if I don't make good on my first objective to truly show you once and for all how to do blank, some really amazing, awesome, wonderful thing, right? Then I insist that you do not give me a dollar. Do not do business with me at the end, okay? However, if I do somehow miraculously find a way and you agree with me that I was able to accomplish this big, crazy, massive promise, then you should, at the very least, with an open mind, consider what I have to offer at the end of this webinar today. Do we have a deal? And everybody other than a psychopath will say, yeah. And people will now, everybody's on the same page, cool. You, you you give your heart to me for free and you really help me out, I'll consider buying from you. And now everybody feels really comfortable about it. And for the beginner webinar pitch person, that will probably increase your conversions more than trying to do all of this other fancy advanced stuff that everybody else teaches and everybody else models. It's just, just put the offer up front, let them know that there's something for sale and then contextualize it. And that will make it so easy because now all you gotta do is create a webinar to pull off what they think is impossible. So you go, here's my target. I just got to help them under this thing that I said I'd promise them. And if I do that, I know they'll buy. And if I don't do that, then I got other problems. I shouldn't be selling them something until I can either figure out how to do that or find something that I could do that will completely revolutionize their life. So give in advance, right? Value first, sell second. And if you do that, I think that's going to be your best bet. And then after that, you can iterate. After that, you can add in another thing here, another thing there. And pretty soon you'll be like a multimillionaire. I love that. I love that. And I mean, you know, obviously they can go follow you. We'll put all the details in the show notes. But one of the best ways I learned, because I didn't do any big special course to learn webinars. I just started watching other webinars, right? I started going to the best webinars. And then I love psychology. I've always loved it. So I was just watching what they were doing, right? And then you, you see those consistent trends and that framework that, you know, most have taken from you, right? And yeah. uh, over time, and, and I think that's what I encourage everyone to do. So obviously um, you have content on it and you can help people, but people really should just go reverse engineer, start watching, start studying how they're done. And um, and I think, you know, the webinar or format of the webinar will live forever because it's, it's, it's interactive, right? And it's more time with a person and it's more understanding, you know, you're building that emotional connection, which is very hard to do with low tickets, which is what I sell a lot of. Um, and, and that's just, for me, the entryway in, and I love the the live event setup or the video face to face setup because it builds a much better customer and a brand over time. So, Jason, appreciate you being on. Uh, where, if people want to learn more about you and find you, can they do that? Yeah, if you want to know specifics on webinars, I got a book. I think you can buy it for ten bucks on Amazon Kindle or twenty bucks if you want to get crazy on the paperback. It's called One to Many. So go on Amazon and buy that. And then follow me on YouTube. So I'm trying to finally, I've done all this stuff without any social media presence, Rudy. So I figure, hey, I've been in the game 16 years. I might as well 
do what all the cool kids are doing these days. So check me out on YouTube. It's funny is because it's the people like us that have run ads and funnels for years. It's almost way harder, right? To like actually. So much harder for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm failing in public every single day, but I love it. Good, good. Well, we're always a beginner at something in life, but we have the discipline to stay consistent at least and the, the knowledge to hire experts to help us in our weaknesses. So, buddy, I appreciate you coming on. I know I'll see you soon at an event. Everyone read the book because it's going to teach you a ton about selling to many, which is I always teach you is so important to impact lives, right? The more impact you can have across many people. And when I've always learned when people pay, they pay attention. And that's the great thing about what you can do on a webinar is you can get someone to commit and help them change their life. Um, and we see that with the members that come through our webinars and our live events, they commit way more. So we actually have more ability to change their life, more impact. And as Jason said, more means too, because we're charging a higher price than something else, right? So Jason, appreciate it, buddy. I will see you soon. Um, and thanks for sharing your wisdom after all these years and all these hundreds of millions of dollars sold. Thank you for having me. See you guys.